Welcome to Marketers Talking Marketing. Angela, thank you so much for joining us today. Tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Sure. Thank you, Jess, so much for having me. Hello, everyone listening out there. My name is Angela. Uh, I am the founder of Formation Marketing based out of Austin. Uh, a little bit about me. I've been in marketing for over 10 years now, worked in a variety of different companies, everything from startups all the way to large enterprises. Uh, currently have my own consultancy, which I founded about two years ago, helping startups to build out their demand gen strategy as well as execution plans. Um, when I'm not doing that in my spare time, I have a little Yorkie named Penny, who I love to take on adventures around Austin. I'm very passionate about uh, traveling as well. So I'm excited to be here and excited for the conversation. Awesome. So excited yeah. to have you because I think this topic is probably the most in-demand conversation right now, and that is how to really start your own marketing consultancy. You know, what you ran into, your experiences. We really, it, on LinkedIn, I feel like every couple of days I'm hearing someone talk about thinking of exploring it or wanting to dive into it, but where yes. do you start? You know, it's, it's, a big, it's a big adventure. Definitely. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to tell the audience a little bit about my journey to getting to starting my own consultancy. So... Uh, as I mentioned uh, at the at the top of this recording, is I have been working in a variety of different startups as well as large enterprises for pretty much my whole career. Uh, during the pandemic, um, you know, I, along with the rest of the world, was sitting at home with not much to do. So I thought it would be a great time to potentially make some additional income. And so uh, I happened to be plugged in with a consultant at the time, and she was actually looking to leave the world of consultancy. She actually, yeah, she actually gave, she was like, yeah. oh, you know, I know you, you know, you have some extra bandwidth outside of your full-time job. I have, you know, two clients that I'm looking to hand over to someone five hours a week. Uh, is this something you'd be interested in? And I was like, yeah, you know, I'm not, I know. I was like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not doing anything. I'm sitting at home. So might as well, you know, make some extra income um, on nights and weekends. And so uh, that's honestly how I got started. I was doing some moonlighting, uh, freelance marketing work on the side while I was working in full time. And then fast forward, I think I did that for maybe about a year, a year and a half. Uh, fast forward to the end of a year and a half. Uh, I was working at a different full time role at the time. And it was, I didn't feel like it was kind of really suiting me from a cultural perspective or from what I really wanted to do perspective. And I started thinking and I was still moonlighting with those same clients. And I sort of was like, you know, what if I just went full time with these clients and kind of left the corporate world behind? Um, and so as I was thinking through that, I had built up a really good relationship with those moonlighting clients of mine. And so I went to them and I said, hey, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, taking a break from corporate life, full time life. Do you have extra work that you need me for? Um, they're like, yeah, absolutely. We need you for more hours. And so I did the math in my head. I was like, you know what? I think financially I can make this work. I can still sustain myself despite um, not having a full quote unquote full time job and after running the numbers, I was like, I think I can do this. I think I could make this work. And so I ended up quitting my full-time job, continuing on with those two moonlighting clients of mine and slowly over time just started getting more clients. Um, and so, yeah, so that's a little bit about my journey into the world of consulting. That's awesome. I feel like so, so many times in life, there's someone else who comes in and sees an opportunity for you that maybe you don't even see for yourself and brings brings people into even a little a little thing like that where it can be impactful. And I, yes, I always definitely. love what it's women bringing other women up with them yes. versus yeah, the the competitive days of hopefully yes, past. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. And I will add one thing. So I've been I had been thinking about doing consulting for for several years leading up to that. And there was a huge fear because I had worked in corporate my entire career. I had a steady paycheck. I had health insurance. I had benefits. 
I had all of those things. And, but there was always this voice in the back of my head that it was like, oh, it'd be great to work for myself. Like maybe that's something I can explore. But there was a huge fear around that. I was like, well, what if, you know, I can't get clients? What if I, you know, can't make enough income to sustain myself? And so that's why when this opportunity came about to do the moonlighting and it happened to be during COVID where I had, you know, extra time that I wasn't going out to devote to this. It was, it was sort of like a safe way for me to test it as well, like mentally speaking. And um, without any quote unquote, like repercussions, uh, like severe repercussions. And so it was like a safe way for me to be like, well, I've still got my full-time job, um, but let me just try out, like, what would it be like to consult, to freelance? And so that also gave me confidence as well when I finally decided to move fully into freelance because I had been doing it for probably like a year, year and a half leading up to that. And so that also was, you know, kind of the, the risk averse side of me wanting to like, let me, let me try this before I actually fully commit. You found like a safe way to test it. I going found a into safe it. way to test it. Yeah. yeah. I think for a lot of folks that I talk to, I think, you know, them quitting a very nice, you know, well-paid full-time job and then jumping directly into consulting is a very daunting task. So what I always advise them is like, why don't you just take on like one client, you know, not nothing crazy, nothing that would impact your full-time work, but just one client on the side. It's just a safe way to test it. And it's also just mentally for you to see if you even like it. First of all, like maybe you test it and you're like, you know what? I don't really like consulting, which yeah. could happen too. But um, that's what I always advise people to do. Yeah. I love that approach. And I think those are common fears that people are yes. probably saying to themselves when they're thinking about going out on their own. Like, can I find clients? Can I sustain this? I remember for a long time, especially pre-COVID, whenever I would talk to people about entrepreneurship, health insurance was the number one thing that I would hear. I'd say like, yes. I would love to, but I, I need health insurance. Like, well, you yes. know, there are other options. Uh, not the cheapest. <laughs> but, not the cheapest. No, yeah. not the best. Yeah. Probably, I will say, compared to my full-time health insurance. Yeah. Did you find that as you were sitting around thinking about doing consulting, you know, starting to dip your toe in it and mm -hmm. starting to face some of these fears you had, was there anything else that helped you kind of push through those and work through maybe even like unconscious fears that were holding you back? Yeah, I think for me it was, I always told myself and I, as I was thinking through, you know, the pros and cons of each um, I actually reached out to a couple of my mentors, which I strongly encourage folks listening to um, try to have a mentor um, in your life. And there, you know, I, I had one that I previously worked with. I had one that I was introduced to. They're all marketing leaders. Um, and so they understand the space. They understand the market. And so I think having a marketing, um, someone like a mentor that can help you think through it was also very helpful. And the second thing was that I mentally told myself and reassured myself about was if all else fails, if all my clients suddenly go away one day, you know, if I think back, you know, I was able to get all those corporate jobs, you know, throughout my entire career. I, I should have the confidence in myself to know that I can get another corporate job if, you know, if you know, all the clients go away. So that was always something that I kept reminding myself of is, you know, I can always go back into the corporate world. It's not as though now that you can never get a full-time job again. Um, mm -hmm. So that was also something that I constantly reminded myself of. And I honestly, when I started, I was like, let me give it like six months. Like, let me give it a year. So I gave myself, let's just try this for a couple months. Let's just see how it goes. If it fails, I'll try to get another corporate job, which I, think, which I think also comes back to the self-confidence that you're like, wait a second, like I've been able to do it before. I can, I'm pretty sure I can do it again. Um, so that was also something that I needed to remind myself of as well. Yeah. There are a lot of people who 
go yeah. into being self-employed or do consulting for a handful of years and then find themselves saying, I really miss being in-house. I miss yeah. having a team. You know, I yeah. miss being able to, to have that depth of work. It's not yeah. uncommon. So consulting definitely does not make you a candidate to never be employed again. <laughs> like it yeah. it's, makes you employable still. If anything, yeah. it makes you more employable because you've had this breadth of experience that people in-house haven't had, but it does not by any means make it so that you will never be hired again. Exactly. That was something my mentors also helped me kind of work through as well. And them being kind of marketing leaders. And, you know, I asked them like, am I unhirable? I'm trying to go into the world of consulting. They're like, no, you could, you're still hireable after you go into the world of consulting. It's not as though you're like branded a certain way because you were a consultant. And so I think I needed to hear, even though I know rationally that made sense, I think I needed to hear it from an outside party and to, to reassure myself. Yeah. Were there any, any pitfalls or road bumps that you hit that first, let's say like year of consulting full time yeah. that if you could do it over again, you would change or approach differently? I think for me, you know, honestly, I learned everything sort of on the fly. I was like, oh, I should probably get an LLC go. I literally like Googled like what you need to do. <laughs> Start. It's like all, all the, I think having that research done ahead of time would have been helpful. Um, I sort of did it as I was going along. Um, and so I would say definitely do the research ahead of time, have the game plan ahead of time on, you know, the LLC, like getting the health insurance going, like all of those different things. Um, uh, so I would say those are definitely kind of top of mind. I think the second thing as I finished out year one was contracting, the actual contract itself. And so I got kind of got burned a few times because of the way my contract was worded in the sense of like, you know, one of my clients just, you know, had to downsize. And so I was told, I think on a Wednesday that my contract would end on a Friday. And so I was like, oh, I should have probably wrote something in my contract about you need to give me, you need to pay me out for, you know, X number of weeks. Um, because that was very stressful to when one of my big clients suddenly said, hey, we don't need you anymore. I need to quickly yeah. backfill. So that would have been helpful. You know, I, I had a similar experience. Yeah. One of my largest clients first year in, they yeah. decided to just cut marketing. Yeah. Uh, bold decision. Yeah. Don't, we'll see how that works out for them. But they decided to just cut marketing. And I had in our contract that we had to have two weeks notice and yes. they gave us a day notice. And I said, Hey, contractually, you're still obligated to pay right. through. So I'll send you a prorated invoice. And they were like, no, you really? send us a prorated invoice for actuals. And if you want the rest of the money, you have to sue us. And I'm like, I'm not going to sue you. Like I could take you to small claims court, but right. that's, you know, that's, that's money out of my pocket when you're already taking money out of my pocket. And so right. I looked at that cost of recovery for those additional funds. And I said, it's not worth it. So I had that contract, but it still happened because ultimately people are still, you know, some, unfortunately, like the reality is not everyone acts with your best interest or acts ethically when, when times start to get hard. Yeah. And yeah. That's and then, yeah. yeah. And, and then they yeah. paid six weeks late. So it's was like, just please just pay me so I can pay my subcontractors. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So similar, but yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. I knock on wood. I haven't had anything like get to that point. Um, but no. I mean, that's unfortunate that there's, you know, businesses out there that yeah. even though actually you're obligated to pay out your contractor for a certain amount of yeah. time, they kind of like don't do that. So that's really unfortunate that that happened to you. Yeah. It's, yeah. I think that was my experience the first year in business. What yeah. similar similar to the contract side, I had different people at different nets for payments because some clients said, yeah. "Yeah, like bill me end of the month, I'll pay you net 15." Some said I need net 30. Some invoice were comfortable paying up front, and right. everything was so wonky that by the end of the first year, I just, "All right, that's it. Everyone gets invoiced the first of the month for that month because most people are on retainer or project work, and everything's a net 15." 
and I'm just yes. setting up an autopilot. And if people push back, I said, Hey, I would love to, but this is really best practice that my accountant said I need to follow. So right. I started blaming like an imaginary accountant <laughs> for it. And I found people yeah. were, they argued with me much less when someone else was at fault who wasn't in the conversation. Yeah. And yeah. it made a world of difference. Just trying to standardize that stuff. Right. I'm the same way. I think I, I can't, yeah, I think I, I don't remember if I like talked with a consultant or if I just read like to do that. So I, I think mine are, you know, I do, I think for me, it was like, I was trying to mirror the way that I was paid in corporate. And so it's like first and 15, you know, I build twice net 15. And I was like, I just want to have like bi, bi-weekly paychecks. And so in my mind, I was trying to do the same with my clients as well. And sometimes I do get pushback where it's like net 30 and I'm like, no, wait, I need net 15. Like I, yeah. I need to have that 15. I can't wait 30 days for this. Yeah. So, Even though having that conversation, I found if you're working with a really good client who sees you as a partner and cause I have, I had subcontractors on a project I had to pay out and I just said, Hey, my subcontractors, I have to pay up front cause it's project work. And so I'm floating this entire thing. And then they're like, okay, we get it. We're comfortable paying you more early. If they're a partner, they want you to grow with them. Right. You know, they want to see you flourish and they're going to be happy for that. They're not going right. to try and hold you back. But not, right. not everyone is, is a real partner, unfortunately, when yeah. it comes to clients. Yeah, exactly. And I think that goes, obviously, you can't, you can never know when you have those initial conversations with them. But I, I found that, you know, like, what you said, just having those conversations up front when you're negotiating the statement of work and just being like super, there's no confusion. There's no like back and forth. It's like, we talked about this up front, so it's easier to refer back to it. Um, and I think you could all, yeah, I feel like, I guess on the topic of good, cl- good clients versus maybe not so great clients, I feel like there's been times where it's like my spidey senses are like, oh, I don't know about this client and then I end up, you know, working with it. I'm like, yeah, I should have listened <laughs> for a number of reasons. It can be beyond just like the payment piece of it. it could be related to the work piece of it. It could be related to like certain personalities within the team. Um, but I, I, yeah, I guess just, it just reminds me of the uh, kind of different client personalities, if you will. Yeah. I, I <laughs> love data. I'm a data lover. And then data Mm -hmm. plays a really valuable role, but so does Mm -hmm. intuition. Because as humans, we've evolved over a lot of time to have the spidey senses, to be able to understand subconsciously when something doesn't feel right. Right. And especially if you're just starting out where like you need that client, you need to make your bills, you're trying to chase it. It can be easy to fall in that trap of working with someone that you know isn't quite the right fit. Right. But I (laughs) always trust your gut. Always trust your gut yeah. with it. And I, I'll, I will be the first to admit year one, there was times I'm like, oh, I don't know about this. But I went against my better, my intuition because it was year one of my consulting journey. And I was, I think at the, like my goal for myself year one was try to get as many clients and keep my income as steady as possible. But I think as you build up that confidence and as you, you know, make a good name for yourself and you establish a reputation of being a certain type of um, consultant, and um, I think you can be a little bit more picky versus like year one, I was like, not really super picky, but I think as you build up that confidence and that roster and those referral partners, I think it's very empowering to feel like you can be picky. And that's why I got into consulting in the first place was because I wanted to work with the people I want to work with and do the stuff I want to do. So um, yeah, that's that's kind of been my uh, learning as I kind of finished out year one and now I've uh, done this for a few years. Yeah. What was your moment where you were like, all right, I am, this is my lifestyle. I am not going back to working corporate again. I don't know if there was really a moment, honestly. And I get asked that quite often, like, would you ever go back and work for corporate? And I'm like, I don't think I'll ever shut the door on corporate completely. Honestly, I I think I take it like even year, maybe month by month, year by year, I guess you could say. Um, I don't know if there was that like light bulb moment where it's like, I, I'm never going back to corporate because I think it's also just a combination of like my life 
my personal life circumstances, my professional life circumstances. So I don't think I'll ever say no to corporate, but I always tell like people that ask me, I'm like, for this season, I guess this season of my life, this suits my lifestyle, this suits, you know, how I want to live my life and where I'm at in my life just both personally and professionally. I think this makes sense for me right now, but maybe in a few months, maybe in a few years, that will change. Um, so I, I try to keep a kind of an open mind about that and not say, you know, I'm consultant for life or I'm going to go back to corporate and never go back to consulting again. So I try to keep an open mind because you, you just never know what's going to happen. I like that. That's a good approach to it. If you were talking to someone who was they maybe they're moonlighting and they're thinking about making that full-time leap what would you tell them i would tell them to think about i think this is something i told myself was kind of think about finances of you know what like kind of working through the finances of how long can i potentially maybe be at a net loss for you know x number of months until i can build up that roster list how much cushion do i have these are the things that i was talking to myself about i was like okay if i have one client i get up to three clients i can kind of get close to my full-time stuff so i would say like model out different scenarios in your mind of um you know kind of the financial aspect of it and then the other thing is I got really lucky in that my moonlighting clients needed me for more hours. And so I would say, don't be afraid to be like, hey, I'm actually going to be transitioning to full-time consulting. Is there extra work you need me for? Because I just asked them. I was like, do you need me for more hours? I was like, yeah, we actually do. It's like, okay, cool. Like, had I not asked that, I would have never known. Um, the other thing is, especially if you have a really good relationship with your moonlighting client is... Um, and I was very fortunate that I had really good relationships with them was, you know, one, they've been most likely probably been working with them for a while. It's like, Hey, I'm, it's just to be really like, I guess, vulnerable <laughs> in a way and be like, Hey, I'm, I'm going to make this decision of moving into consulting. And hopefully you've had a really good experience working with me. If there's anyone in your network, as I'm building out kind of my consulting practice, that you could refer me to, I would really appreciate it. Hopefully you found me, you know, you found working with me um, a positive experience. Um, and so that's also something that I would say, don't be afraid to, to bring up as well. Yeah. I love, I love that point. Something that surprised me in a really delightful way is when mm -hmm. I started. So I'd made the decision to go into consulting and I quit my mm -hmm. job and I just, I said, fuck it. I'm going in full time jump straight into it. And yeah. when I started telling people, I just said, Hey, and I went to maybe 10 people. I said, Hey, I'm considering going to consulting and here's why, you know, X, Y, and Z. What do you think? Do you think that's a good move? Do you think that sounds risky? And do you know anyone who could use my services? And yeah. from those initial conversations, I filled my calendar for three months of work. And Incredible. there's so many people who want to see you succeed, who yeah. want to see you do well, who are happy to make intros and referrals if you just ask them. And I yeah. never realize how easy it is to actually make that ask once you start doing it. Yeah, it. I agree, Jess. And the, that's the other thing that I was a little bit um, worried about when I got into consulting was like, oh, I'm like, I don't like cold calling. I don't like, yeah. like being like, can you, you know, like, I just like, I, I really, that's just not my personality to, you know, pitch myself and sell, yeah. sell, sell. And, and I think I've had to kind of reframe that thinking in the sense of, and this is what I tell folks that ask me this too, that are similar in personality to me. It was like, I feel weird, sell, you know, like pitching myself and selling my services. And it's just, that's, you know, I'm, that's just kind of a weird concept to me. I think what I've always, uh, what I tell myself when I've told them is I would think about it more in terms of recounting actual things that have happened. It's not so much that you're selling yourself. You're just, you're just recounting what you've factually done before, where it's like, I have done this thing. I've also done these other three things for clients. I've also, you know, increased pipeline from this to this. It's not that I'm selling myself. It's just, I'm just telling you factually what has happened. And I think that that, like reshifting that thinking makes it a little bit easier when you have like initial client calls or 
have those initial intro meetings with clients and being like, I'm just factually telling you what I've done. I'm just summarizing <laughs> some of the things I worked on versus like, I'm trying to land you as a client. I'm trying to get you um, sort of mentality. Yeah, that is probably one of the harder challenges to growing and scaling is being able to find those clients in a way that you feel good about how you're going about yeah. it. And, you know, we've seen companies like Marketer Hire and a lot of matchmakers really come up because they're just bringing consultants uh, yeah. deals and they're, they're kind of doing that outbound sales for them. Right. Yeah. And I think it's, I will say that, you know, definitely like maintaining your true authentic self, I think is, is definitely important in those situations. And I would say that most of if I think that most of my business now, it's like a huge majority of it is from referrals. And so from old clients, old coworkers, old bosses, just this web of net of folks. And so in those situations, it's not so much that you're kind of pitching cold. It's like folks have already vouched for you. So that also makes it a little bit easier when you have those conversations where, yeah. you know, you don't need to, I guess, sell <laughs> quote unquote as hard if yeah. you will. Yeah. Yeah. It's always fun to, to work with old coworkers at a new capacity. Yeah. I've been really fortunate. I've had a couple coworkers that I used to work with that have brought me into the startups that they are now working for. And so I'm like, you know, it's, it's really cool to be able to, to work with them again and to have them vouch for me to bring me along to their next startup. So that's been, that's been a really cool yeah. Um, experience. Yeah. Well, Angela, thank you so much for joining us today to thank talk you. about your experiences and share advice with those who are thinking about jumping into consultancy also. Yes. I'm very, as you can tell, I'm very passionate about this topic. Yeah. All of Angela's links will be in the show notes below. And if yeah. you have any questions or comments, drop them. We're always happy to chat.